much for joining me today on My Smart Tech TV. Today I'm joined by Peter Gibson, who works at the at CASA, and CASA stands for Civil Aviation Safety Authority. So welcome, Peter. Thank you for having me. Now, Peter, can you tell me a little bit about what CASA do? Well, we're the Australian Civil Aviation uh, Safety Regulator. So we set the safety rules for aviation, both uh, uh, aviation that uh, is operated by crews and uh, remote aviation, so drones. Um, so we set the aviation rules, the safety standards. Uh, we also carry out uh, checks and surveillance to make sure people are following those rules. Uh, we do a lot of work in the area of education and uh, training to make sure people are aware of the safety standards and what they need to do to meet those standards. Um, so we've got a fairly wide remit, but it's all focused on safety, uh, keeping the skies safe uh, for uh, all Australians. Amazing. And obviously drones, I mean, they are becoming increasingly more popular with um, civilians. What, how many people in Australia own drones roughly? Do you know? Well, that's a great question because now we don't actually know the, the answer. Uh, we have a registration scheme for commercial drones and that tells us that uh, there's about uh, 20,000 odd uh, people uh, with commercial uh, drone licenses. And I think about two and a half, maybe close to 3,000 now organisations uh, accredited to operate as uh, commercial drone uh, operators. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know the scope and size of the commercial industry is, uh, uh, is of that nature and growing very rapidly. Uh, but in the recreational side of things, look, we really don't know. The best estimates are somewhere between probably 500,000 and 1,000 drones out there being operated, uh, flying, flying for fun. Uh, but it could be more, could be less, really don't know. Um, but uh, it, look, again, a sizable group of people and growing all the time uh, and uh, ranging from people who are flying quite regularly because they enjoy it as, uh, as a recreation, as part of, uh, you know, as a hobby. Um, some of them even race their drones. Uh, uh, two people who probably only fly, you know, a handful of times a year, take it away perhaps on holidays to get great shots of, uh, of their holiday destinations and the family doing fun things. So, um, yeah, look, at a wide range there. And obviously we're trying to, uh, trying to tailor our safety to meet that uh, quite uh, wide range of uh, people that are involved in drones. Mm, right, and because you guys have also released a bunch of um, safety apps as well. Is, when was that released? What's the sort of, is that just kind of giving it to people in a more digestible format? And can you just talk me through what they do and how they kind of make an impact? Yeah, what we did, uh, initially we put out our own safety app and then we realized it was gonna be very hard to keep up with the uh, rapidly evolving uh, technical side of things uh, and that there was a marketplace out there that other people wanted to provide this information as well. So what we do now is we provide a database, if you like, of uh, information which we uh, want to see uh, communicated to people who are flying drones and then allow uh, providers, app, app providers, to build their own apps based on that information and that data and then put it out in the marketplace. So there are now about, I think, just we've got a few more recently, I think there's about six or seven now uh, that people can choose from. So they're CASA endorsed apps, they're apps that we've looked at and we say, yep, they've translated the raw data into accurate and usable information for flyers. And the most important thing you can get out of those apps is that you can put in your location and see in real time uh, based on your real location, whether it's safe to fly or not. So it'll tell you, are you too close to an airport? Are you too close to, uh, say, a, a heliport at a, uh, at a hospital where emergency helicopters might operate? Are you within restricted airspace for, say, defence purposes? Um, are you in any, you know, some other sort of high risk situation? And the apps have it just marked very clearly, you know, red zones are not fly zones, orange zones are fly but with caution and the information is provided. So really important if you are flying a drone, whether you're flying it a couple of times a year or every day, 
to have one of these apps, find the ones, one that suits you best uh, and use it every time you fly because uh, even if you're flying in the same location, there could be something going on that suddenly uh, impinges on the airspace you're using that you should be aware of. So a quick glance at the app will just tell you, is it safe to fly? And of course, it's a new location. It'll give you that information that you might not be aware that just over the hill on the other side is in fact an airport. Uh, and either you can't fly your, app there, your, your drone there, or if you can fly, you've got to fly with caution and be aware of the uh, existence of, uh, of the airport. So the apps are really, really important safety tools. But the great thing is they're simple to use. And also they give you access as well to the rules. So if you want to check the rules out, not sure of something, really easy way to do it. So fantastic resource. Everyone who's got a drone should have one of the apps on their phone and use it. Gosh, and you're right. I mean, these things would be changing so much. Areas are changing, new things are being built. So it's definitely key. It's good to sort of keep up with all the changes. The thing that always freaks me out is being on a, if a drone went on to in like a clash with an airplane, um, what, what, what happens if people do break the rules or if they're, you know, what are the, what's the kind of um, penalty and, and how does that work as well? Yeah, well, I mean, the rules are pretty common sense, which is great because it makes, means they're easy to follow. But they're things like don't fly within uh, three nautical miles, which translates roughly to five and a half kilometres of what we call controlled aerodromes. Now, controlled aerodromes are just where there is an air traffic control tower and the airspace is uh, controlled by the, by the controllers in that tower. So to enter that airspace, you actually got to get clearance, which means you can't fly your drone there, which is a, an, another form of aircraft, uh, either without getting clearance, without getting permission, uh, or, yeah, you can't fly your drone there unless you get clearance, unless you get permission. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's one of the rules, and that's one of the things the app will show you, um, you know, no fly zone. Um, the uh, other rules are things like don't fly within 30 metres of other people. Um, we do that because it's, it's just simply a buffer zone. It's saying, look, uh, if your drone was to fly out of control, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, therefore run the risk of hitting someone. If you've got it 30 metres away from someone else, it's highly likely to run out of control into the ground long before it uh, runs into someone's face or side of their, you know, their back or something yeah. and hurt them. Um, other things like don't fly your drone at night because we want you or, uh, uh, or beyond your line of sight because we want you to have it in your line of sight at all times so you can see what's going on around it. Um, the logic being that, um, say you're flying your, your drone down at the park and you're flying 30 metres away from other people and it's all hunky-dory, if you were using um, uh, the, uh, the, the vision goggles and you didn't have uh, awareness of what was going on around the drone 360 degrees, and a child, for example, was to run across the park, excited by the by a drone being um, being uh, operated uh, and uh, suddenly flies up, you know, uh, suddenly runs up uh, into the path of your drone, you may not, you know, if the drone was facing the other direction, even though you've got the camera on the drone, you may not see the child approaching. So we want you to have line of sight, visibility of the drone at all times. So you can see what's going on around it uh, and therefore if there are any safety risks that you need to be aware of. So keeping your line of sight, don't fly at night, those sorts of things. Um, so to answer your question, if you break those rules, those rules are in fact enshrined in Commonwealth regulations, which are the equivalent of laws. So therefore there are penalties. Uh, and the penalties uh, start with on the spot fines at uh, $1,500, uh, go up to over $11,000 if the matter was taken to a court and the court was to impose a fine. Uh, and for some of the more serious ones, like endangering uh, the safety of an aircraft or endangering the safety of a person, uh, there are, in fact, jail penalties attached to those of six months imprisonment. So a court could, uh, in severe cases, uh, actually send you to jail. Um, so, yeah, so there are serious consequences. Um, has anyone ever been sent to jail? No. 
Uh, have people been fined? Absolutely, yes. Um, people have been fined um, commonly, usually that $1,500 fine, but people have had courts impose uh, bigger fines than that as well. Um, usually for doing things that all of us could see were pretty silly to do, like, for example, flying your drone on the flight path of a major airport. Um, and then putting the pictures up on uh, social media, thinking, wow, these are exciting pictures, uh, which uh, one view of the world might be they are exciting pictures. And the other view of the world is, yeah, but you were right in the flight path of uh, aircraft with hundreds of people on board. And so therefore, dangerous. You're, oh, yeah, goodness. you're putting that, that aircraft at risk. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, people have, have copped quite big fines for, yeah. for doing exactly that sort of thing. Quite rightly so. Mm. That was going to be my next question. I was going to say, how, you know, how is it going? Are you finding that people that are breaking the rules a lot or is it kind of fairly sort of um, people are keeping in line with the regulations? Yeah. Oh, look, the good thing is the vast majority of people do the right thing. Um, and because the rules are, as I say, common sense, it's not hard to do the right thing. It's not difficult to, uh, to, to, to comply with the rules because they're really simple. Um, but uh, you do get people who do the wrong thing because they simply don't know, mm. um, or, uh, or or obviously there are people out there like the example I gave of uh, flying into a uh, flying a drone into the flight path of a major airport, uh, doing that because they can it's exciting or they think they can get lots of likes on uh, on social media. Um, so yeah, look, um, we do from time to time get evidence and information of people breaking the rules. We do investigate if we can prove something uh, was done uh, wrong and deliberately done wrong. We will issue fines, uh, and we have taken and we have uh, had matters taken to court uh, where people have obviously been very irresponsible and deliberately irresponsible. Um, so yeah, look, um, you know, you can expect it. Um, also, the major airports around the country are 26 or something, I think, roughly, uh, major airports. So all the capital city and major and regional airports now have drone monitoring equipment running 24-7 at the airport. So you can actually see what drones are being flown around the airport. Uh, so any we detect real close to the airport within that five and a half kilometres uh, is potentially, of course, breaking the rules. So we do try to identify those people and take appropriate action. Uh, but we can also see drones being flown further out, which gives us just a bit of a picture of what's going on. Um, and uh, so, yeah, sometimes we see people breaking the rules, most of the time not, which is great. Um, and we do take action uh, where needed. If people want to find out more, um, what's the best place to go? Yeah, look, anybody who's uh, got a drone uh, or getting a drone, one of the first things they should do is go to Know Your Drone uh, website. So just chuck Know Your Drone into a search engine uh, and that'll come out. And it's full of really user-friendly stuff. It's got videos, it's got uh, written information, it's got quizzes you can do that test your knowledge, uh, all sorts of stuff there that's simple, tailored for people flying for fun, uh, but but accurate uh, and up to date. Um, so that's really important. Use the Know Your Drone website. It's a resource built for you, uh, but also make sure you download one of the apps. Uh, and of course, you'll find the links to the apps uh, on the Know Your Drone website. So you can have a look at the available ones and choose the one you would like to use. Um, so they're, they're probably the two most important resources uh, that you've got. And, um, and I guess you look, you know, the main message is have a look at those resources, use them regularly. Uh, if you're flying your drone regularly, um, because uh, the rules do change as well and, and get updated. Um, and the other thing we will be moving towards over the course of 2022 uh, is a recreational drone registration scheme. So we will be asking people with recreational drones to register them with us. The main reason for that is so that we can uh, have a direct relationship with those people so that 
uh, we can you know, obviously know who they are, got their email address, and uh, be able to send them directly safety information. So as the rules change, as the safety standards evolve, uh, things get better, we can tell you about it, uh, we can give you reminders, we can, as we build new resources to support you, we can make sure you've got them at your fingertips. So we'll be bringing in that uh, uh, recreational drone registration scheme, um, probably roughly around the middle of 2022. Great. That's great. Well, yeah, I think it makes you know perfect sense. If you're going to own something like that, you need to take responsibility and, and know the rules as well. Um, have I missed anything? Any kind of um, anything else you wanted to cover off before we sort of finish up today? No, look, I think that's the the the, the guts of it. The main thing we want to really emphasise is, you know, we want people to have fun with their drones. Uh, we want as many people as possible to be flying their drones who want to fly drones. Uh, but we just want them to be aware that there are some responsibilities that come with that. They're not big responsibilities. They're not difficult responsibilities, uh, but you need to know what the safety rules are. You need to follow those safety rules. Uh, and if you do that, you'll be, you'll be, uh, you know, you'll be sweet with your drone uh, and it'll probably help you fly your drone more effectively. You're probably less likely to damage or lose your drone if you're flying the safety rule, uh, flying according to the safety rules. Um, so, you know, it's all it's probably all a, a way of flying better um, if you uh, have that bit of knowledge. Um, and, you know, you never know, it might lead you on to wanting to end up with a career in flying drones. There are now a whole heap of companies out there that operate drones commercially for all sorts of purposes, all sorts of industries, and uh, they are employing people. Um, so uh, there's all sorts of opportunities out there and uh, further down the track, big companies are looking at uh, developing big drones to uh, carry cargo and eventually people. And they're going to need drone operators sitting somewhere, you know, overseeing the, the flight of the drones. So yeah. There's opportunities coming down the track. It might be five or 10 years away, but nevertheless, it's real. There are people working on this today as we talk. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, what starts as a hobby for you today, you never know, it could be a career tomorrow.